Good morning and welcome to our service for Palm Sunday. Uh, hopefully you've all received the order of service by email and can join in at home. Of course on the first Sunday of the month Wadhurst and Tybrook would usually have an all-age service and uh, we're obviously all gathered together with this one service here because of our current uh, circumstances. So this service is going to be a little bit all age, a little bit three as one, and quite a lot of Palm Sunday. Uh, I hope you have um, managed to get hold of a palm of some form this year, because obviously we haven't been able to distribute them. You may have made one, as Heather showed us how to do so on the video that she recorded a few days ago, or you may have cut something from the garden that you can use as a palm. But either way, um, we can use our palms in our worship this morning. And so let's begin with the opening responses. Hosanna to the Son of David, King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, if you'd just like to lift up your cross, let's pray the blessing. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, may these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we can wave them as we sing the first hymn, which is of course the proclamation of the kingship of Christ. Make way, make way for Christ the King. the king in splendor arrives fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives make way make way for the king of kings make way make way and let his kingdom end he comes the broken hearts to members of our congregation. Oh, wonderful. 
Wasn't that fantastic? Our worship band of the future. And now we pray the collect. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Now, many of us will have had rather um, unusual, rather unfamiliar, maybe quite disrupted weeks this week. Uh, we may have been very busy, and that busyness may have been things that we're not used to doing. Or we may have had quite a lot of time on our hands. This is what some of our young people have been doing. Oh, it's black! Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm Alice. I'm Zach. And here are some of the things that we have been doing. I have been playing my electric guitar very loudly and getting fish and chips from the fish and chips man. I have been climbing the apple tree and pressing some lovely flowers. And doing boring schoolwork. Boring. Yeah. We hope you are well and we hope you can see me soon. Bye. Bye. So boys, what have you been doing? Um well playing Mario Kart, you do the stuff in it. Yeah. Um, we've been doing quite a lot. Um we've been playing with our cute dog, um we've been yeah, we've been um doing loads of schoolwork, um we've been to the woods making dens and yeah lots of stuff have you read any books yes i've read the chronicles of narnia it's how narnia was created um and it's very interesting if you don't know what narnia is then you can look it up on the internet and i'm not sure what the author is but i'm sure when you um just type up narnia it'll come up oh, and leo have you read any books no, I, I, finished my action storybook bible but now i've finished well yeah, yeah you know i finished it um, and now i'm reading the big action bible my, oh, wow. my one excellent oh thank you very much and in isolation it's a perfect time to get your dog to do tricks and stuff you can tell me I jumped on a trampoline a load of time and I got sad because, because I didn't want to come off but then I, yeah, you know, the mummy took me off uh, and then I said, um, I, I could play on a little one, two little trampoline. Okay, so, what else have you done as well as the trampoline? What learning have we done? What challenges? Play football outside. Okay, so you've Daddy. done... So you jumped on the trampoline and, and played football. Mommy. Anything else inside? Writing. You've done some writing. Reading books. And what what sound did Draw. you learn? What sound did you learn today? No, za. Za. Yeah, za. Well done. Za. Are you having fun with your home learning? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder what the kids are up to. Let's go and investigate. What's going on here, kids? We are painting a tire to um, make it. Then we will put soil in it to make a plant. Ah, oh, great. Where did we find the tire, guys? We found the tire in the wood. And Maury, what were we doing this morning? English and maths. And? Anything else? Lunch. Lunch. Good. Very nice. Enjoy your day, guys. <laughs> and now the confession. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let's just take a moment to sit in stillness before God and to allow him to speak to us through his spirit and bring to mind the things for which we wish to seek forgiveness.
and so we pray. God our Father, we are sorry that we have done wrong. We have often forgotten you. We have often been selfish instead of loving others. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, and help us to follow the example of Jesus more nearly. Through his name we pray. Amen. And so may the Father forgive us by the death of the Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit, now and always. Amen. The reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that, it is, that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Today's reading is uh, taken from Matthew's Gospel. It's chapter 21 and it's verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem, and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Our second hymn is Praise is Rising. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, return to
face the day And in your presence All our fears are washed away When we see It's when we see We find strength to face the day And in your presence All our fears are washed away Washed away on God's word let's pray Lord Jesus we do thank you and praise you for all that you have done for us we proclaim your kingship over all creation we proclaim your kingship in our lives and we pray that you would be with us now by your spirit and speak your word to us for we pray in your holy name and for your kingdom's sake amen so today's gospel reading is Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which is the beginning of the passion narrative that takes us through Holy Week to Maundy Thursday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But especially in Matthew's gospel, the account positively oozes prophecy and imagery. Matthew wanted to leave his readers in absolutely no doubt that Jesus was and is the Messiah that had been promised by God and long awaited by his people. He explicitly tells us that this took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. The prophet in question is Zechariah, not one of the best known of the Old Testament prophets, but almost all of his short book, which was written about 550 years before Jesus rode into Jerusalem, concerns the fulfilment of prophecy about God's Messiah and final judgment. The Old Testament has many, many prophecies that are about Jesus. Jesus entering Jerusalem riding on a donkey is just one of these prophecies, but it is absolutely explicit, isn't it? There's no mistaking it. To fulfil prophecy in accordance with the prophets, these phrases crop up repeatedly in the Bible and in the creeds. They can give the impression that Jesus's hands were tied. He did what he did because he had to. He was following a path that had been set before him. He had no say in the matter. That is, of course, not true. Jesus was indeed following a set path, but it was a path he had defined himself at the dawn of creation, and he had chosen to reveal aspects of it ahead of time through the prophets to help people recognise that all that unfolded no matter how contrary it looked to our expectation of how God would be at work in the world, was in accordance with Jesus' divine plan. When we hear and see the words to fulfil prophecy, we should not hear Jesus had no choice in this matter, but rather Jesus' sovereignty is shown in this. The other details of the entry into Jerusalem that Matthew gives us, not foretold by prophecy, would still have reminded people about other incidents in the history of Jerusalem. When one of the most celebrated kings of Israel, Jehu, was anointed, people spread their cloaks under his feet as a sign of loyalty. We read that in two kings. When Judas Maccabeus entered Jerusalem after defeating the Greek occupiers of the land of Israel, people waved palm branches in celebration. We read that in two Maccabees. That was the beginning of the royal dynasty through which King Herod based his claim to the throne of Judea. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people sang royal hymns and chants and proclaimed Jesus to be the son of David, from whose line everyone knew the Messiah would come. 
Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Nothing could be more explicit. But Jesus was coming to Jerusalem not to be enthroned like King David or Judas Maccabeus or even King Herod. He was coming to die. The meaning of this so-called triumphal entry into Jerusalem was very different from what the people witnessing it thought they were seeing and from what they wanted. This is an object lesson in the mismatch between human hopes and expectations and God's answer. Jesus has said as much to Peter on the way to Jerusalem when he taught his disciples of his impending death and Peter had denied that it would or could happen. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have your mind on the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. That's what Jesus said. Or to put it another way, as I'm sure you may have heard other people say, God does not give us what we want, but what we need. The crowds who witnessed and participated in Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem were going to be disappointed. But that disappointment was ultimately only at surface level. Jesus's arrival in Jerusalem was indeed the moment when salvation was just about to dawn. The Hosannas were fully justified, just not for the reasons that the people supposed. History was unfolding in accordance with God's ultimate and perfect plan, not in accordance with the so much smaller and lesser and more limited scope of human imagination and aspiration. And so shall we pray. Lord Jesus, we do praise you that you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We thank you for all that you have done, for all that you have achieved for us through the cross and through the resurrection. And we thank you that your vision for our world and for all its people is so much greater and so much more wonderful than we can possibly imagine. And so we do pray with all our hearts for the coming of that day when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord and that we will see your kingdom in all its fullness and completeness and perfection. For we pray in your holy name. Amen. And Martin is now going to lead us in prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, as we gather in our many different places this morning on this Palm Sunday, we come before you, your children, your family, and we give you thanks for all that you have done, especially at this time of year when we are thinking towards the great events of Easter. This was the day when your son came into Jerusalem in triumph and palm leaves were thrown on the ground in front of him. Father, we can never truly understand the total love that you have for us, but we take it wholeheartedly into our own lives. Father, at this difficult time, we look around our world and in the space of a few weeks, things have been turned on their head. Father, help us to deal with the confusion, the loneliness, the pain and the suffering and even the loss. Father, you are there every single time with us, no matter where we are or what situation we may be in, you are with us. Father, we just ask that you would enfold us in your love, in the strength that you can give in the silent times and in the busy. Father, we just ask for security of mind, peace of soul. We pray especially for those of our number who are maybe feeling very isolated with having to stay indoors and not be out and about as much as they would like. Father, we pray for the elderly in our community and we just ask that everybody who is able would gather round and be able to help in practical ways. Father, we pray for all the families who are staying at home and for all the parents who are educating children. Father, though this is a difficult time, may it also be a time for great joy and great delight and families growing closer together. Father, help the forgiveness to be there ready and that the anger and the frustration would not boil over 
and cause disruption amongst families. Father, we pray especially for the emergency services and especially the National Health, for all that work there and are doing the most incredible job under the most unbelievable of circumstances. We pray especially for doctors and nurses in the front line and for the scientists who are striving as quickly as possible to obtain a cure and a test for the COVID-19. Father, we pray for all who are in ministry as they seek to adapt to all the circumstances that are changing and to become more familiar with technology and to broadcast your message, your praise and your glory through a different medium. Father, we pray for all those who are listening to this that they may gather strength, gain knowledge and comfort and also be able to share with friends and family who have perhaps never come near a church. Father, we thank you once again for all that you have done. Keep us safe, keep us well, keep us faithful and keep us strong. In your name we ask for all these things, in your glorious and perfect name. Amen. We gather our prayers in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. We do have a slot for notices and birthdays today. Just one notice. Uh, Hopefully you've all received by email or through the post um, this little leaflet, Holy Week at Home. This is a series of reflections for Holy Week going from today, Palm Sunday, through to Easter Sunday. And I hope you'll find it Uh, helpful in your celebration and preparation for Easter. Now at our all-age service we always celebrate birthdays and Jenny and Emily are going to do that for us now. Good morning, it's lovely to be with you all this morning at our first virtual all-age worship birthday slot. But before we do the birthdays, just because it's virtual, and just because we're in lockdown doesn't mean that we've forgotten the memory verse. So, Em, do you have last month's memory verse? So, last month's memory verse was, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We are sure that all of you will have got that this month. So, when we next see each other again, you can all have a prize. And we'll make sure that the box of dreams is full of lots of lovely prizes for when we meet again. So, on to the best bit, which is definitely cake. And we have a cake. It's not a virtual cake, a real cake. So we're going to light it and think about all you lovely people who have April birthdays. And we want to give a very special happy birthday to Paul, our vicar, who is an April birthday. Very sensible. It's a lovely month to be born. Spring birthday. So happy birthday to Paul and to all you other April birthdays. And when we meet again, you will have your birthday bookmarks. So we're going to sing happy birthday now to all of you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy we come to the conclusion of our Palm Sunday service and we begin to look ahead to the week that is to come, to Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and ultimately to Easter Sunday. Our final hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
and now the blessing. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So I hope you have a really good week. I hope you're able to make use of the resources that we're um, posting online or posting or emailing and the other things that you might uh, find for the celebration of Easter on the internet. And in the meantime, let's keep in touch, keep well and keep safe. God bless.